All right, hey guys, we are going to get into learning target seven, evaluate quadratics um, in the real world context and interpret the meaning. So we have learned how to solve quadratics. We've learned what quadratics are, parabolas, all that kind of stuff. If you are struggling with any of those basic concepts, you need to go back and watch those videos, go back to the con practice, go back to that, um, those other practices that are on the more um, quadratics tab, okay, because we're only building on this learning target and I'm not really going to go over the specifics of solving just kind of working through how we're thinking about this in a real world context because not all of quadratics can be real world alright so looking at the first example here we have the product of two positive consecutive integers is 156 please on all of these write down all of um, the notes that are on the screen okay so that you have those as a resource for you come um, test time or in class because a lot of times we forget what we did on the videos and I I found that people aren't taking full notes okay so we have two numbers something times another number that is 156 okay we're supposed to find the, the integers and this is a product of two consecutive integers so I hear product so I'm thinking factors okay I'm thinking two numbers that are um, right next to each other. So you might want to use x and y, but I'm going to use x, and then since they're consecutive integers, I'm going to use the second number as x plus 1, because that'll just be a number 1 bigger than x. Okay, so x times x plus 1 is going to be 156. All right. Now, if you can factor that right away, if you um, can say, I know what those two numbers are, great. I'm going to show you how we can solve this using quadratics um, also. Okay, so if we expanded this out, because we can't use it as a factor form right now because we don't have 0, then that would be x squared, x times x, plus 1x, and then minus 156, if we subtract 156 from both sides, and that would be 0. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you... Um, the, I'm just going to work through the steps of the quadratic formula here off to the side and then you can look through that and then also just say um, talk about maybe factoring these as well. Alright, so I see right away here or from my work here that x is either going to equal negative 13 or positive 12. All right, so that's what we got when we used either the quadratic form or simply factored, saying that 13 times a negative 12 is a negative 156. 13 plus a negative 12 is a positive 1. All right, but we are asked of the product of two positive consecutive integers is 156. So these not, aren't necessarily the two numbers we're looking for. The numbers we're looking for, though, are just 12 times 13 equals 156. This is just an example of how you can use quadratics to find those two numbers if you didn't automatically just think of them right off the bat. Another way quadratics are often used is with areas of rectangles. Okay, um, So we have a, the length of a pool is 10 meters more than its width. The area of the pool is 875. So we're asked to find the dimensions of the pool. So if I set up a little quadratic here, I have that length times width, so x times x plus 10 is going to be 875. All right. So that's basically what we're looking for is can you set this up? Can you see what this is and then solve it from there? So I'm going to set it up into general form x squared plus 10x minus 875 is going to equal 0. So we're going to try to find um, an x here and again we're going to come up with probably two answers and we're going to talk about which of the answers makes sense in the real world context. So I'm going to do the work for, with the quadratic equation here because I don't um, I can't think of two numbers that solve this easily off the top of my head. So I'll put that work on the side and then we'll talk about the answers. Alright, so our answers using the quadratic formula are x equals 25 and x equals negative 35. But obviously we can't have a negative length here so I know that I'm going to use our positive here so the, that our width is 25 okay and we know that the length is 10 more than that so our length is just going to be 35 meters are both of those measurements okay so I just take the positive answer and then make that work with our real world situation probably um, the most common use of quadratics 
is um, when you're throwing things. I've shown you guys, maybe not in both classes, that when you throw anything, if you guys just take an underhand toss, a marker, toss something in your room, or wherever you're doing this, it will create the shape of a parabola. Okay, so we have an equation here that models the height of the stone, a stone thrown into the air, where t is our seconds and height is our, or h is our height in minutes. Okay, so we're going to use t h, where t is our time elapsed and h is our height. We're asked three questions here, so we're going to do each of these three questions separately. The first one is how long is the stone in the air? So from the time it was thrown to the time it hit the ground. All right, so here's where it would hit the ground. We want to find our time that it took to hit the ground. All right, and I know here, but when it hits the ground, um, h is going to be zero. So we're looking for our roots, right? Or we're looking for one of the roots. We're looking for a positive root that's going to be about three point something. All right, if we estimate on the graph here. So if we set up this equation, we want h to equal 0, so h equals 0, negative 4.9t squared plus 17t plus 2.2 will equal 0, and we can have 0 on either side of that, okay? Um, so I'm going to set up the quadratic equation again, show you our work, and we're going to talk about the positive root that we get. All right, so the answers I got were x equals negative... 0.124, so that would obviously be this root, and the positive 3.5943. So that's the root we're talking about. That's when it hits the ground. So we would answer this question by saying that it hits the ground when the time is approximately 3.6 seconds. All right. Next question asks, when is the ball, or when is the ball 10 feet tall? Okay. Um, or when is the stone 10 feet tall? So if I look over here, at 10 feet off the ground, I can see that I'm going to have two times where this ball is going up and it hits 10 feet, and then when it's coming back down and it hits 10 feet. So we're going to look at the equation negative 4.9t squared plus 17t plus 2.2 equals 10. All right, so then I'm obviously going to have to subtract 10 from both sides to find this answer. Okay, and again, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. I'll put my work over here. All right, so our answers are x equals 0.544, so that's about right there, would be after 0.5 seconds about. And then the other time that it's 10 feet tall is at around 3 seconds. All right, so we can answer that question. This is the time when the stone is at 10 feet. All right, our third and final question is probably the easiest question. It says, what is the height of the stone when it is thrown? So we are looking right about here when the ball is thrown. I'm looking at the y-intercept, okay? Um, and you guys remember the y-intercept from when we talked about linear equations. It's when we cross the y-axis. So that's going to have a time of zero, okay? Before the ball, or before the ball is thrown, where is it thrown from? So I'm going to take my equation, h equals, and I'm finding h this time, and we're going to substitute 0 in for t. So this is going to be 0 squared plus 17 times 0 plus 2.2. All right, and obviously 0 squared is going to be 0 times 0, 17 times 0 is going to be 0, and our height is just 2.2. So at the ball is thrown from 2.2 feet. All right, so this is how you can use um, a graph to help you visualize the situation and then use quadratics to help you answer these kinds of specific questions. All right, before class, I'd like you guys to answer this question. Susie wants to build a garden that has three separate rectangle sections. She wants a fence around the whole garden that is between um, each section as shown. The plot is twice as long as it is wide. There's a typo there. And the total area is 200 feet. How much fencing does Susie need? See if you can figure it out before class.